All right, hello. And here I am on day two of my seven day commitment to going live or making video content to share on social media. And in case you missed my video yesterday or my live, this is a commitment that I made with my new coach that I'm working with. And it is a commitment to putting myself out there and being more comfortable with my visibility. And I'll share more about that in particular in another episode. <laughs> so I thought I would keep it light today since yesterday's subject was insights on trauma healing. And so I thought it would be kind of fun to share with you a little bit about my big love adventure on the road a few years back. So in, let's see, 2019, my then partner and I decided that we were going to do a round the world trip, a multi-year round the world trip overland, which is essentially vehicle dependent travel. And uh, just to preface, I may say we or I interchangeably in this share and it simply because it was the two of us at the time and I'm also speaking in the singular now that I am uh, on my own so to speak and so you may notice that throughout this little video and so research was done a lot of research <laughs> months worth of research and this has been a dream of mine to do a around the world trip for a very, very long time. I love travel. I love international travel. I love exploring other countries and meeting other people from different cultures and experiencing their culture and really immersing myself in the full experience of being amongst the locals, not just being a traveler that's passing through, but really diving in deeply and taking my time to really be with and experience what it's like to live that way of life. And so doing a trip like this around the world over a period of several years by vehicle would really afford that opportunity. So this, if I didn't mention already, type of travel is called overland or overlanding. And I, I hadn't heard of that before at the time, and I discovered that through, I think, I did a search on YouTube for uh, round the world travel or something like that. Driving around the world maybe even, I, I'm not sure, but I discovered a couple who was, I think, from Australia. They were pretty young, and they were doing this in a little Mitsubishi Delica van, which I had never heard of. It was pretty tiny and they were doing it. And it was really inspiring to watch their videos. And that just turned into a whole rabbit hole of exploration and discovery about that way of traveling. And really it's, it's kind of a subculture of people who are pretty hardcore if you think about it driving your vehicle in another country your own vehicle not just driving in another country but your own vehicle and everything that it takes to be able to do that all the preparation the familiarity with your vehicle the being okay with the unknown and the willingness to handle whatever situations arise with your particular vehicle in another country that may not be familiar with that vehicle and finding somebody to help you work on it if it breaks down or learning how to work on it yourself. So that will be a whole other episode maybe um, and you can look it up. Anyways, one couple that I will mention that was very noteworthy and who I absolutely adore and who've become like internet friends are uh, Grizzly and Bear and they are a beautiful couple who has been overland traveling for I think 
they've been traveling for at least 10 years, I believe, and they've been on the road in their uh, Land Rover Defender with a pop-up four-wheel camper, which is eventually what I ended up buying, uh, the four-wheel camper. And their videos and the content that they share is truly breathtaking and inspiring, and it really tells a story. So if you're curious, I'm just going to give them a little plug because they're truly amazing people. Check out their YouTube and Instagram or Facebook, Grizzly and Bear. The N is an N. So watching their videos and seeing the places that they have been to and that they were traveling in pretty presently at the time the videos came out or come out or close to it, Parts of the world I had never even heard of or thought of traveling to. And so that was really exciting and inspiring for me. So research, research, research. What vehicle do I want to get? You know, an RV isn't really practical for that. It's really clunky and big and bulky and, uh, you know, pulling a trailer, also not really ideal crossing borders, think about putting your vehicle in a shipping container or driving it onto a boat, a ship, or a ferry. Uh, and a lot of times you're charged by the weight or the size of your vehicle. So something kind of compact. Also thinking about roads that you're going to be traveling on and the terrain and the conditions, whether maybe if you were going through a little town, the road might be super narrow, or if you're going off-road on a pathway that could be quite narrow as well, and like one single track. Uh, so all kinds of considerations. Research, research, research. I came across a some websites online and discovered uh, like a community forum of people who are sharing information about overland travel, border crossings, uh, you know, situations that would arise, and ended up connecting with a person who I was able to ask some questions about the vehicle that I was considering or the vehicles that I was considering. And this is somebody who was very familiar with uh, the ve different vehicles and had spent a lot of time working in that realm and in that industry. Shout out to Jim. Hi, thank you. <laughs> so uh, after some conversations and back and forth, I got pretty clear on the vehicle that I wanted to get and actually synchronistically the vehicle that Jim recommended, and specifically the words he said is, um, check, out, uh, check out the channel or the social media of Kid and Gypsy. They have the rig that you want. So check out the, the rig of Kid and Gypsy. Pretty kick-ass looking thing. <laughs> Fully well-equipped super heavy duty, rugged built, uh, four wheel drive, Dodge Ram truck, older diesel, easier to fix on your own or to find parts for out of the country, all kinds of stuff like that, right? And then a flatbed pop-up camper so that it allows for more storage and it can compact when you're dri driving and on the road so that you can fit in smaller spaces or areas and it's not as top heavy and, and kind of bulky and clumsy. So long story short, I think it was maybe weeks, if not a week or more or so later, uh, through a series of people come to find out that Kid and Gypsy have decided to put their rig up for sale. And this was not something that was known at the time that Jim pointed it out to me. So it was pretty synchronistic. I was put in touch with them, ended up connecting with them and buying their rig. Shout out to Kid and Gypsy, two very stand up individuals who um, are also super inspiring in their travels and journeys and just really amazing people that I got to spend some time with. 
And uh, so onward. I end up traveling. I was, the plan was to meet Kid and Gypsy in Texas near Houston because uh, the rig, which was named Roxy, was actually on a ship coming back from Ecuador where they had been traveling. So uh, I got to wait like six weeks or so and ended up getting all the arrangements in order and didn't, doing a lot of research about importing the vehicle because Kid and Gypsy live in Canada, they're Canadian, and that's where the vehicle was registered. So there was an import process, which was also interesting, I'll say, and challenging and confronting at times, and it happened. So I ended up having to fly to Toronto where they live because I wasn't able to do the import while the vehicle was in the country in Texas. So they drove back to Toronto from Houston and I flew to Toronto and ended up bringing the vehicle back through the border in New York and driving diagonally across country. So I was on a bit of a deadline because I had tickets to this uh, event called the Overland Expo where I was going to be taking classes on like vehicle recovery and four-wheel drive, off-road dr driving and um, border crossings and all kinds of stuff having to do with overland travel and getting to like meet other people, uh, meet the four-wheel campers, uh, company representatives and other owners and just, you know, get to know people that are doing this sort of thing and soaking it all up. So I was on a deadline and hi Seb from Canada. <laughs> so I ended up uh, kind of going in full gear, wasn't taking a leisurely drive across the country. However, I did get to make a little stop in Tulsa to visit with a very good old friend from Chopra Center, Michael McShane, who was living there at the time and working as a teacher, as a coach. And I got to visit him at school and meet some of his students and get to see the gym, his classroom, and the beauty that he put into it and the heart and soul and the inspiration that he was providing the kids and sharing with them his dharma as a teacher, as a coach, sharing the principles of Ayurveda and yoga and meditation uh, in a way that was very accessible to the youth who lived in that area. And um, it was really inspiring and so much fun to get to visit with him. And so one of the things that I really loved about my journeys was having these experiences with friends of mine along the way and, and unexpected really I, you know i wasn't really planning it was very last minute that i was going through tulsa oklahoma and once i knew that i was i reached out to him and we were able to make a meetup happen so that's kind of one of the magical things about being on the road is getting to reconnect with friends and also the meeting of new friends and it looks like I'll probably share the, this info in a, a few different videos to keep it from going too long. So visit with McShane and then uh, off to the Overland Expo, which was happening in Flagstaff, Arizona. And uh, I got to camp with the Four Wheel Campers crew and other owners and that was a lot of fun it was just a really cool sense of community uh, four wheel campers sponsored uh, meals lunches and dinners i think it was and cooked for us and there was just um, a lot of fun getting to know some of the guys that work for four wheel campers mike and stan who actually like took time after a very long day of an event to come to my camper and help me out like with troubleshooting a couple of things and just hanging out and getting to know each other. So um, 
that was also really fun and special. And the classes were pretty intensive. I ended up not doing off the road, off road classes because uh, I can't remember why. <laughs> I think that the camper was full of stuff and I was very concerned about doing off-road stuff with a camper full of things that could fly around. So, um, however, did go to other classes that were super informative and very inspiring. And then, you know, off to California to sort of prepare and sell everything and give everything away, which is what I did, what we did, and um, kind of do final preparations in San Diego before going into a, a more local trip in the US to do like a shakedown, get everything dialed in and figure out the, the vehicle, get acquainted with the vehicle, how it drives, how it feels to drive a vehicle like that, which was also pretty intense and fun. <laughs> you can take your eyes off the road or the for like a split second. <laughs> and it weighed like 13,000 pounds when it was full. So it's a lot of momentum and weight and energy behind that wheel. <laughs> So, from San Diego, um, we left in like this, I want to say it was the summer of 2019, yeah, it was the summer, and went up to Washington, the state, Washington State, to visit with some friends who had just bought a property up there and were kind of doing a fun gathering and met some really cool people there. Headed over to the Olympic Peninsula, which is the very northwest coast of Washington State. Gorgeous, just green, luscious, beautiful. There's a rainforest there, the Ho, H-O-H, rainforest is located there. And growing up in San Diego, where it's mostly very dry and like a desert with the exception of palm trees that were planted to make it look tropical. <laughs> I, aside from traveling to Asia and Indonesia, Thailand, I had never been anywhere in the US that was so green and lush and beautiful, aside from Hawaii, which I don't really remember because I was a little girl. So, oh, breathtaking, so, so beautiful. The Olympic National Forest is there. I highly recommend it. It's um, lots of beautiful trails. You can see across the view on a beautiful day up from the, one of the peaks or several of the peaks t across the, the water, which is the, Strait of San Juan de Fuca, I believe, and you can see across to Victoria, Canada, and just beautiful. So after that, there really was no plan. Well, and actually there really was no plan, period. <laughs> it was a, a lot of unknown, winging it with a little bit of a plan, but really allowing for like, let's see where this takes us. Let's go with the flow. There was a, a desire to go up to Alaska and drive up to Alaska, which ended up not happening um, because of time that summer. It ended up getting too late in the season. Uh, and so there was a moment where we found ourselves like, where do we go from here? And just magic of synchronicity and also like asking and connecting with people, I think is one of the key takeaways for me from this experience. And I remember we asked someone who was working as a volunteer at a like 
a local point of interest. It was like a, a sandbar. I'm like, I'm not remembering the name of it at the moment. And it's in Squim, Washington. And asking about like places to camp that were, you know, where we could park overnight. And that was okay because in the um, national park, you have to have like a camp, a permit and a camp um, campsite or whatever in the national park. And it had already gotten late in the day. So the person said, oh, you know, I think I have a number of somebody who um, welcomes people to park on his land. And interestingly, earlier that day, I had had this thought when we were talking about where are we going to go? Where are we going to sleep tonight? That was also a big question <laughs> that ran through the experience. There were a few questions. Where are we going to sleep? Where are we going to poop? And where are we getting water? <laughs> And that was like a daily question, almost daily, at least for the water. So uh, <laughs> she says, I have, I think I have his card in my car. So she runs back to her car, gets his card, gives us the info. We give him a call and he's like, yeah, come on, come on over. You know, what kind of vehicle do you have? And um after just, you know, a few minutes of conversation, he said, sure, just come on over. And so we did. And we ended up meeting Lonnie. Shout out to Lonnie, who is a amazing soul and generous human, funny, vibrant, just very gracious host who hosts couch surfers, or he did at the time uh, from around the world. And I'm gonna pause the story right there and keep you hanging. And I'm gonna share more about that in a future video because um, it's a good place to stop. So I'm making a little note so I don't forget where I left off. <laughs> and one of the things that I'm really excited about doing is sharing my pictures and videos of this trip i haven't really done that uh, and there's so much to share it's it'll be like a crazy photo dump <laughs> um so look for some photos i'll share some photos and things from this particular part of the trip that i talked about today and uh we'll pick up where i left off on another day so thanks for tuning in. And if you made it this far, I thank you for your time and attention. <laughs> Whenever, uh, it's funny how quickly 20 minutes can just go by. But actually it's just, you know, minutes and days and weeks and years seem to be flying on by as well. So I'm not surprised. <sighs> I'd like to know if you went anywhere interesting in the last handful of years and or if you have any dreams of traveling somewhere maybe you have a bucket list place that you've been wanting to go and so I'd love for you to share that with me hello from the Philippines yes the land of my people <laughs> Philippines is definitely on my list. I will be traveling there on my own or with my sisters and uh, some friends potentially and, you know, maybe finding a beautiful place to bring a retreat in the future. Yes, Carol. Cliffhanger! <laughs> hmm, there's something to do that, isn't there? <laughs> so... Yes, we will continue soon. Please share with me, like I said, if you have a place that you've been wanting to go or if there's a place that you highly recommend. I'm definitely putting the energy and intention out there for travel again in the future. Uh, it's one of my favorite things. And this particular trip, this around the world trip, ended up not happening at that particular time. I'll just say that 
because of 2020 and the pandemic and borders closing and countries closing and all of that. So that I know will happen in the time that it's supposed to and perhaps in a different way than I thought it would. And I'm comfortable with that. So, all right, my loves, have a beautiful evening. Thank you again for your time and energy and attention. I send you my love and wishes for a beautiful evening or the rest of your day. Bye for now.